How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Hopefully, is having a lovely day. Let's talk a little Jake Browning. Jake Browning comes in, backup quarterback for the Bengals into that Baltimore Ravens game, and it was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. Getting hit, getting left and right. Oh, did not look ready. Did not look prepared, at all, to say the very least. But that was going up against what it looks like. The front runner in the AFC right now, the Baltimore Ravens playing some of the best defense, playing some of the best football that team's played in a long time. And now you look back and say, hey, Bengals have struggled against the Ravens historically, even under Joe Burrow. I remember when Joe Burrow was just getting killed against the Ravens game in and game out, especially that first year in his career or first year in, his, in the league he had. And you kind of can look back and say, hey, you know what? Maybe we should take a step back. Maybe we shouldn't overreact in this situation just because it's a backup quarterback. You kind of put that bad voodoo, that bad mojo on it. But hey, Browning kind of did the same thing Burrow did enter in this league. Struggled against the Ravens, had some Steelers woes. And then all of a sudden, things started to click. Last two games now, tossed for 354, tossed for uh, 275. Has 75% completion percentage he now has on the season. 75%. Keep that in mind. That, that's pretty ridiculous. 9.1 yards per attempt so far this season. Last uh, three games since he's been a starting quarterback, he's averaging 9 0.8 yards per attempt ridiculous numbers and now the big question is hey can we expect jake browning to maintain this can is jake browning the real deal now here's the thing he ain't, he ain't maintaining 9.8 yards per attempt that's not happening that's not realistic he is playing above the median here you know even as an elite quarterback that's not going to happen it's just not Teams are going to adjust. They're going to slow you down. They're going to figure things out. They're going to adjust. They're going to figure things out. And they're going to, you know, kind of like they did with Burrow in his first year. Remember, Burrow led the league in yards per attempt, uh, not first, his first full healthy year. And then teams kind of adjusted, figure out what, he, what this team was about, what they wanted to do. But that doesn't mean you can't be ultra successful and super successful still. And you look at Jake Browning and say, hey, I think he's capable of being just that. Uh, what, what's working for Browning? We have to keep in mind, you know, the difference in playing for the Ravens or playing for the Eagles and a backup quarterback coming in and winning them a Super Bowl or whatever is you're playing behind the best offensive lines in the league. And, you know, just like in a Mahomes situation, it's a lot easier to play in Kansas City because you can stand back there for three and a half seconds and survey the field. Yeah, they might not have the weapons right now, but you can stand back there for three and a half seconds to throw the football. Bengals don't have that luxury. They haven't had that luxury. And the offensive lines have definitely improved. But even with that, Jake Brown is getting rid of the football just as fast, actually slightly faster than Joe Burrow does. And Joe Burrow is one of the best in the league to get rid of that football as quick as possible. So he's getting rid of the football quickly. He's making good reads. He's completing passes, which is stuff I think is, you know, very, very sustainable. Stuff so you look and say, hey, that's real deal type of quarterback stuff. If he was standing back there for three and a half seconds, trying to throw the football and there's no pressure in his face. And then he was doing this like, okay, you know what? kind of kind of fits in his system a little bit but to get rid of the football the way he is to see him when he doesn't get rid of the football and you know understand his first read might be, not be there and see him go through his progressions next level stuff uh we've seen it a couple times against the indianapolis Colts. the indianapolis Colts, by the way was the second ranked team in the league when it came to sacking opposing teams quarterback the only team that sat quarterbacks more than the indianapolis Colts this season with that front four was the baltimore ravens jake browning was not sacked the entire game a testament to how well that offensive line played and also a testament to this guy finding the open guys this guy making plays with his legs this guy standing in the face of pressure i remember two or three times in this game where there was a guy draped in his face and he was calm cool collected kind of quickly you know lobbed a little bit over his hand uh, lobbed it over the guy's head enough to where it couldn't be deflected i think that was a rollout right there was a guy up in his face and this guy in the end zone he just had to he had to get the you know it's, it's a lot more difficult pass than it looks like where you have to kind of get the proper trajectory over that little linebacker linebacker's hands reach and drop it in there we've seen him do that time and time again making some beautiful passes and again when you can sit there and step up in a pocket and play under pressure that is you can't teach that there's a lot of guys in this league that get i mean look at the guy that was just crying about the referees last week i mean you want to be patrick Mahomes? i'll tell you what here's something the Bengals have figured out a way to beat the chiefs by rushing through but i'll tell you what with where that guy is emotionally i mean i'd be rushing i'd be blitzing six every single time and forcing him to beat with somebody other than kelsey i, I think you throw a fit all game and you'd beat him easily nowadays i think it's a little easy <laughs> i think it's pretty easy to beat this guy at this point in time get him flustered anyway uh go back to the Bengals. you know that's the difference right when you have those quarterbacks can play under pressure play under that with, but that composure, when the times are the biggest, then you look and say, hey, if he can do that, if he can do that, if he can give us what Joe Burrow does under pressure, ooh, I don't know if we'll get the equivalent, but if we can get close, 
this guy can make some noise. This guy can be the real deal. And that's where you kind of look and say, hey, can he sustain this? Because it's like, okay, again, we go back to the clean pocket thing. The guy's opening, the scheming up the quick screen passes and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that stuff's kind of easy. But to make the quick reads, to find the guys in the seams, to find the deep routes, to find the guys in the deep outs, stuff like that, the plays that take some progression, some anticipation, he's throwing those and he's making those reads. Oh, now you got my attention. And if you can do that kind of stuff under pressure, without getting flustered, without making silly mistakes. And we haven't seen a lot of those out of Browning the last two games. Now, the first ones, he's like, hey, there's some stuff there. The last two, he, you know, for the most part, he's going to make a mistake. You got to remember this. This is guy been three starts. He's going to make some silly mistakes. Burrow did it. Burrow made some, what was that? What, what was happening there kind of things? Trying to do too much with not, uh, you know, too much with not enough. And he just kind of threw it, you know, forced it into places. But you look back and said, hey, it worked out. And that's what Jake Browning kind of is, where you have to believe he's going to make some silly mistakes. He ain't been playing long enough, but boy, to come into the scene, onto the scene the way he has on a team that could have been depleted, a fan base that kind of felt, eh, what's going to happen? He comes and takes his team by the reins, leader of the ship. Oh, boy. Boy, does it feel good right now to say Jake Browning is the Cincinnati Bengals backup quarterback. And boy, does it feel like he won't be the backup quarterback for long. Because if he plays like he's been playing these last couple weeks, somebody's going to be ringing on that doorbell. That might be great news for the Bengals. Somebody might offer a first-round pick for this guy before he's a UFA. We'll see what happens there. Love the all's thoughts. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.